So Nintendo's been trying pretty hard to shove Pikmin down our throat in 2023. We got an all new entry in Pikmin 4, and we even got Pikmin 1 plus 2 release, which means all four mainline Pikmin games are all on one platform. Good job Nintendo, you actually remember GameCube titles exist. Now do the rest of them. But this begs the question, if you're a newcomer to the series, is Pikmin 1 even worth trying all these years later? It came out in 2001 after all, sometimes games from that era tend to show their age. We start the game with our main protagonist, Captain Olimar. Unfortunately, it looks like Olimar decided to booze and cruise as he almost immediately hits some debris and crash lands down onto this mysterious planet. This leaves his spaceship, the Dolphin, completely wrecked. And even worse, Olimar can't breathe the oxygen on this planet. This leaves him with only 30 days to fix his ship and escape, otherwise he'll meet an early fate. In terms of the story, that's pretty much it. Olimar wrecks his ship, let's fix it before he dies. Simple stuff. The plot is serviceable and sets up the main resource in the game, time. You see, as I mentioned before, Olimar only has 30 in-game days to repair his ship, otherwise he's gonna meet up with Captain Falcon in hell. Each in-game day takes roughly 13 minutes, so time is almost always of the essence. Can't screw around too much, otherwise you might find yourself at the end of 30 days, with it being physically impossible to get all 30 parts. It's not all bad though, as if you finish off day 30 with all 25 essential parts, you'll still technically achieve Olimar's goal of not dying. Without any further ado, let's find out if Pikmin 1 is worth playing. Firstly, after Olimar ate dirt, I was treated to a lovely wall of text, and this brings up a slight issue I have. See, it's one thing to leave signs around for the player or even have a tutorial, but Pikmin 1 just slaps paragraphs on the screen when it needs to tell you something. While I think there's absolutely more creative ways to convey this info, it's not a deal breaker. I just would have preferred a cutscene or something. Almost immediately, I stumble upon the red Pikmin, or more accurately, the onion that houses the red Pikmin. Olimar notices they look like Pick Pick brand carrots from his home planet, so he decides to call the little creature a Pikmin. Olimar does what any rational adult who just got into a major collision would do and decides to throw them as hard as he can. This shows us the main gameplay loop of Pikmin, commanding your Pikmin to do various tasks like assault a flower. In all seriousness though, these pellets produced by these flowers act as your main method of getting more Pikmin in your army. If a Pikmin picks up a pellet and brings it back to their onion, then the same amount of seeds as the number on the pellet will be ejected. However, if a Pikmin brings a pellet that's a different color of their onion, it'll cut the amount of Pikmin seeds gained in half. After farming 10 Pikmin, we can push a box to open up the level some more, and almost immediately we find our ship's engine. We just need to get to 20 Pikmin in order to lift the engine and take it back to the ship. However, almost immediately it becomes apparent that Pikmin are not beings of high intelligence. That is to say, the AI for them is completely stupid. The Pikmin are dumb as hell in this game. They get stuck on corners instead of moving around them, which often means several Pikmin can get left behind. The Pikmin also tend to act on their own sometimes, which doesn't seem like a major issue, but can become pretty infuriating when one of the little morons is the opposite of what you need it to. Anyway, after getting 20 Pikmin, we get them to haul the engine back to the dolphin, and that marks the end of the first day. From here on out though, all days will be timed, meaning we better haul ass if we want to get our plucky little Olimar home in anything other than a casket. For the second day, we set off to the Forest of Hope, where after some exploring, we discover the eternal fuel dynamo for the dolphin, and more interestingly, some yellow Pikmin. Turns out basic motor functions aren't the Pikmin's strong suit, as only the yellow Pikmin can throw bomb rocks. Regardless of the red Pikmin's inability to use bomb rocks, this opens up the map for us quite a bit by allowing us to break down these solid rock gates. We also reached the cap of 100 Pikmin. You can only have 100 out on the field at a given moment, so any others beyond 100 will stay tucked away in their respective onions. We have to call it a night, but considering we finished with 2 out of 30 parts on day 2, I think we did okay. On day 3 I returned to the Forest of Hope. Nothing crazy, but we managed to snag the Whimsical Radar, and immediately after, I nuked 3 of our own Pikmin with a bomb rock. Workplace safety violations aside, the Whimsical Radar is actually functional and enables a map feature for us, which is extremely handy both in knowing where the hell I am, but also in planning out my routes at the start of a day. Pikmin does this awesome thing where it slowly unveils more choices to you as you play, allowing you to understand what choices you can make without bombarding you with too many options. This allows you to carve your own strategies and observe how Pikmin behave individually before setting off with an entire army. Pikmin asks you to balance your decisions against how much time you have left. Do I spend the day strengthening my army as to make my journey easier, or do I rush for parts and rely on the strategic strength of my ideas alone? Pikmin constantly makes you consider these things as you go about your day, making every decision an important one. Time is a resource, and in order to succeed in Pikmin, you need to manage that resource effectively. Anyway, after bombing the gate, we managed to find the Extraordinary Bolt. Not wanting my Pikmin to have to make the long ass trek across the entire map, we open up a shortcut giving us a more direct path back to the Dolphin. This is another thing I love. As you familiarize yourself with the levels, you'll eventually start making things more efficient by opening up paths that previously weren't available. Your reward for exploring and finding things is allowing you to better manage time, which as previously established is the most important resource in the game. 
After opening up another part of the level, me and my Pikmin fight through a little alley and manage to find the Nova Blaster. Luckily, there was just enough time to get the Nova Blaster back to the ship before time ran out, leaving us with 5 out of 30 parts on day 3. 3 parts in one day is pretty good if I do say so myself. On day 4, I returned to the Forest of Hope, only to realize all the paths I hadn't explored were blocked by water. This means I have no real way of getting through as the Pikmin I currently have drown almost immediately upon touching water. Unfortunately, there was a drowning victim, but hey, I'm no lifeguard, so he's on his own. So we decided to strengthen our numbers a bit and call it a day. Technically a pretty big waste of time, but it's okay, we're pretty ahead of schedule as it is. This leaves us off on day 4 with 5 out of 30 parts. On the fifth day, I landed in the forest navel, which is great as it is home to the blue Pikmin's onion. I immediately dashed over to the onion, which is submerged in water. However, once the Pikmin deploys, you'll notice it doesn't immediately start drowning like our yellow Pikmin did the day before. This shows us that Pikmin have their own elemental proficiencies, and within the same level we learn that red Pikmin are completely fireproof. When you combine this level needing you to use the yellow Pikmin and their ability to throw bomb rocks to open doors, red Pikmin to get around fire, and blue Pikmin to get through water, we start to see the game come together by asking the player to manage all of these Pikmin, their strengths, and their weaknesses. You might be able to use the blue Pikmin to get something out of the water, but once they need to start their journey back to the dolphin, they'll encounter fire, so it's probably best to swap your carriers over to the red Pikmin once the part has been retrieved from the water. With all of that being said, after some shenanigans and growth of our blue Pikmin population, we managed to grab the automatic gear and the space float, leaving us with 7 out of 30 parts on day 5. On day 6, I returned to the Forest of Hope to handle some of the tasks that only the blue Pikmin can do. After using the red Pikmin to kill things so the blue Pikmin could harvest them, we had enough blue Pikmin to do the tasks. We lobbed the blue Pikmin up on a lone island and had them build a bridge back to shore so we could transport the part. However, in my infinite wisdom, I tried chucking some red Pikmin onto the bridge to help build it faster, and unfortunately, we ended up drowning a whole ton of them. Part of it was definitely my stupidity, so we'll call this a 50-50. Anyway, after some work-related deaths, we got ourselves the Sagittarius. The blue Pikmin then pushed a box over for us so we could get past the water. This led us to confronting these bird enemies, and yeah, I really hate fighting these guys. After losing a ton of blue Pikmin, I retreated, but I swore to get my revenge. We ended day 6 with 8 out of 30 parts, and Olimar slept soundly knowing of the mass casualty that was caused under his leadership. On day 7 we returned to the Forest of Hope to do some cleanup as we only had 3 parts left in that area. I set out with my army of red Pikmin and decided to make those birds suffer. After a little back and forth we killed the bird that was holding our part hostage with that part being the Geiger counter. My red Pikmin then decided that jumping off the ledge to safety was stupid so might as well get into another fight with a bird. It takes effort to value your life this little, I'm honestly impressed. These guys are the living embodiment of having a death wish. Anyway, we get our blue Pikmin to knock down a gate that was in the water, which opens up the door to the boss of this level. In the meantime, I decided while the blue Pikmin are working, Olimar should get into a boxing match with the Bullboard. After breaking down the door in the water, I decided to get the part closer to my ship instead, which got us the Shock Absorber. Going back to the door we broke down, we discovered another door, albeit stronger, that shields the boss. We don't have time on that day to break down the door and fight the boss, so we decided we have to return for the final part the next day. This leaves us with 10 out of 30 parts on day 7. On day 8, we charge back into the Forest of Hope, determined to kill the boss. Bosses in this game don't have their own levels, rather they just occupy random nooks in the levels you explore. We break down the door with our army of red Pikmin and move in. This is the Armored Cannon Beetle. As his name would suggest, he's got armor, so we need to figure out how to beat him. I won't lie, it was pretty simple. All you do is dodge a rock, get a Pikmin stuck in his windpipe once he inhales, and absolutely wail on his exposed back. With the boss killed, we obtain the Radiation Canopy and haul it back to the Dolphin. With that being done, we have officially finished the entirety of the Forest of Hope, meaning we never have to come back here. We finish off the day and the stream knowing we did a job well done on Day 8 with 11 out of 30 parts and one area completely finished. The next day I streamed again and this led us into Day 9. I decided to land back at the Impact Site since we have the Blue Pikmin, which means we can fully complete that area as well, seeing as we only needed one part. Upon landing, we explore the small starting area and build our population up a bit since they left pretty big pellets all over the place. We fought and killed this water thingy. According to Wikipedia, it's called the Gulix? I don't even want to know what the hell this thing is. After that, we broke down this door and opened another route back to the Dolphin. We come back with a bunch of blue Pikmin and beat down this clam who has the positron generator and haul that back as well. Not him. That's pretty much all we did on day 9, leaving us with a total of 12 out of 30 parts and the impact site fully completed for a total of 2 fully completed areas. On day 10 I returned to the forest naval with the plan on opening up the rest of the map's shortcuts. However, after wandering around I stumbled across the number 1 Ionium jet and sent that back to the dolphin. 
After that, I decided to go around the side of the map to try to get these two out of the way parts. I found the gravity jumper I abandoned earlier as well, and sent that back to the dolphin. The blue Pikmin yanked the analog computer out of the water, and my red Pikmin took over, braving the fiery path without a scratch. Unfortunately, there wasn't enough time to get the part back in time, as I didn't open enough shortcuts since I got distracted by the parts earlier. I didn't manage to get the second part in that area of the level either, but I moved one of the parts closer to home, so all in all, not bad. Then this happened. I'm drowning! Come on, that's gotta count. So not only do we not save Private Ryan, but a bunch of other random dudes just drown. Luckily, since they were technically with me, they didn't die when the day ended. This left us with 14 out of 30 parts, almost halfway there. <laughs> Moving into day 11, I figured it'd all be pretty simple, and I planned on doing some work to gather the parts in the forest naval. But almost immediately after setting out, I found myself fighting a lot of enemies. While not difficult, this definitely ate into my time. I left the yellow Pikmin to open the door to this level's boss, while I used my red Pikmin to build the bridge to the part I didn't manage to get the day before. I also got distracted and got into a fist fight with some bugs again. I lost a ton of health and had to heal up. Day 11 has been pretty chaotic, but I rounded up some blue Pikmin and some yellow Pikmin and met up with my group of red Pikmin. Using all three of their abilities, I snagged myself the Libra and sent it back with the red Pikmin. I had some spare red Pikmin, so I ran ahead and let them start carrying the analog computer. However, I lost track of time and the Pikmin still couldn't get to the dolphin in time. This meant I had to run to them from across the map as any Pikmin not on your immediate squad get killed at nightfall. So I sprinted over to my Pikmin who were just getting close to the dolphin before time ran out. Luckily, parts stay where you left them, so the next day they'll still be right next to my ship for easy retrieval. However, no parts were actually retrieved, so we finished off day 11, still at 14 out of 30 parts. On day 12, I immediately went back to the Force Naval and grabbed those two parts next to base, the Libra and the Analog Computer. I then took my blue Pikmin and charged into the water after opening up some shortcuts. After jumping a couple of frog looking things, I found the antidioxin filter and it took a whopping 40 blue Pikmin to get it back to the dolphin. Once they were done, I took an army of red Pikmin into the depths of the level and retrieved my Omega Stabilizer from this thing called a puff stool. It made my Pikmin do this, so naturally I made them take it back to use as nutrients. However, they didn't make it back to the dolphin in time with my part, so I had to come back another day. No biggie as I needed to do the other one anyway. This left us with 17 out of 30 parts on day 12. Not looking too bad if I do say so myself. Moving into day 13, I stormed back into the forest naval and grabbed the part that didn't make it to the dolphin the day before. I then opened the way to the boss before midday, giving me plenty of time to take it out and get the final part. I walked into this corner of the map with a bunch of yellow Pikmin and down came, uh, beady long legs. The fight itself went pretty smoothly. Yellow Pikmin can be thrown farther than blue and red ones, so after bombarding him with Pikmin two or three times, he went down, giving us the guard satellite. We take the part back and we finish up the forest naval for good. That leaves us with 19 out of 30 parts in only 13 days and three areas finished. Not too bad if I say so myself. Day 14 and on marked our venture into the distant spring, the only other area remaining on the world map. Right off the bat we head to the UV lamp with a bunch of yellow Pikmin. They can't bring it all the way back to the dolphin yet as the road is blocked by a rock gate, but bringing it within close proximity helps us regardless. I then take an army of blue Pikmin to retrieve their repair type bolt, which was conveniently placed on a ledge right next to the dolphin. The blue Pikmin carried the bolt through the water and took it back to the dolphin without any issues. After clearing out some enemies, we start to build a bridge, but move on due to time running out. This leaves us with 20 out of 30 parts on day 14. After returning to the distant spring on day 15, we went into the water and found the interstellar radio. Not before finding this weird looking egg though. Moving on, we carried that back to the dolphin, but came back to find this mysterious ghostly looking frog. I tried killing it, but it proved way too strong and whooped our ass. After some struggle though, we finally took it out and it dropped a seed that gave us 100 Pikmin. Being low on blue Pikmin and considering the abundance of water, we deposit the seed into the blue onion to gain 100 blue Pikmin back. With our time being taken up with fighting the smoky prog, we decided to use the little remaining time to open a path to the nearby UV lamp, allowing us to bring that back to the dolphin as well. Day 15 ends off with 22 out of 30 parts being retrieved, which means we're finding these parts at a great pace. On day 16, we immediately head across the bridge we created a few days back and find the massage machine, which prompts Olimar to comment on the potential spinal damage he may have received as a result of the crash. Moving on, we clear out a path full of enemies on the left side of the area that leads to some more parts while our blue Pikmin build a bridge. Once they finish that bridge, we find the Gluon Drive, which needs a whopping 50 Pikmin to carry back to the Dolphin. You know, 
Olimar's gotta be stronger than these Pikmin. Why doesn't he help out? What a dick. Reloaded Chicago style pizza only at Little Caesars. Yeah! With two parts returned, we ran out of time for the day, ending day 16 with 24 out of 30 parts. Going through the path we previously cleared, I managed to score the pilot seat, but not much else was able to be done because the Pikmin AI caused the blue Pikmin I was trying to use to carry another part through the water which drowned some of their non-blue brethren. This was pretty infuriating as it felt like for an entire day I was spending more time strategizing against the goddamn Pikmin than the hazards laid out before me. All good though as we managed to get the zirconium rotor closer to the dolphin before day's end. We ended off day 17 with 25 out of 30 parts leading us into the final stretch. On day 18 we really hauled ass. Firstly we went and delivered the zirconium rotor back to the dolphin. We then went on with all of our blue Pikmin towards the other pool of water in the back of the area where we dealt with a really cool puzzle. See, you need to bring blue Pikmin, which you then toss in this flower, to turn into yellow Pikmin, which you then need 20 of to toss onto this shore. The yellow Pikmin are required as they're the ones that you can throw the farthest, which allows them to get up here and bring the part back down. You then need to turn them back into blue Pikmin for them to safely cross through the water without drowning. After doing the puzzle, it nets us the Kronos Reactor. Directly to the left of the Kronos Reactor is the number 2 Ionium Jet, which we get by simply tossing our Pikmin up some rocks and sending them back to the Dolphin. So far we have 28 out of 30 parts, meaning we have one more part in this area. With how quickly everything else was handled, I was determined to get the final part by day's end. I deposit the rest of the blue Pikmin and head towards the center of the area to fight another armored beetle with my band of red Pikmin. After a pretty decisive battle, we are in the final part in the area, the Bowsprit. And after breaking down some gates, we open a path back to the Dolphin. Four parts in one day was amazing and got us to 29 out of 30 parts, which unlocked the final area. On day 19, we travel to the final area, fittingly called the Final Trial. It's a pretty small, simple area that just tests your basic ability to use the different Pikmin's proficiencies to open the way forward to the final boss. And finally, upon entering the final boss area, we triumphantly lose miserably and by day's end are left with only 5 Pikmin. Five dollars. After that bloodbath, we didn't get any parts and ended it off with 29 out of 30 parts yet again. On day 20 we change up our strategy and head in with majorly red Pikmin and a few yellow ones. After feeding this absolute monstrosity some bomb rocks and wailing on him with red Pikmin, we finally kill the Emperor Bullbax and get our final part. The Piggy Bank? I don't think this qualifies as a part, but what do I know. Day 20 comes to an end with all 30 out of 30 parts having been obtained, and we're greeted by an ending cutscene in which Olimar says his goodbyes to the Pikmin and blasts off to return to his home planet. We also get some statistics and uh, wow! 427 casualties, huh? We'll call them collateral damage. But, you know that means of the 703 Pikmin I sprouted, that means over half of them died horrible deaths. So, what's the verdict? Pikmin 1, even after over 20 years, still shows off how amazing it truly is. There's something so simple yet so satisfying about improving yourself on subsequent playthroughs and trying to get all 30 parts as fast as possible. Every little part about this game is pretty simple on its own, but when you take a look at everything Pikmin offers as a whole, you get a wonderful experience that doesn't take a year and a half to complete. I managed to finish Pikmin 1 in two sittings, totaling less than six hours, and while I had prior experience, I've never gotten the good ending before. To some, that short length might be too short, but I feel that Pikmin's length actually makes it more replayable. On this playthrough, I got through it in 20 days, but I know that for some players, even that is long as hell. The desire to want to improve is made even greater, because it really won't take you that long to do another more efficient playthrough. Pikmin has so many tiny choices to make that no playthrough really ends up feeling like another. The epic triumphs and somber losses of your journey will differ from playthrough to playthrough and from player to player. It truly allows your decisions to have consequences on not only how you get through each area, but also on what order you get all the parts. The Pikmin themselves, while completely moronic in this game, are lovable as all hell, and every loss feels meaningful as it weakens your army. The game makes you care about keeping them alive so you can continue to make progress at a steady pace. The music comes off as pretty out there. Not typically what you'd listen to when doing daily tasks, but for a strategy game, it's great. It gives your ears something to do while you might do some of the more repetitive tasks in the game, and some of the songs in the OST are genuinely a great listen. All in all, I think everyone should give Pikmin a shot. Strategy games might not be everyone's cup of tea, but I think there's something for everyone to love in Pikmin, whether it's the lovely visual appeal of the game or the Pikmin themselves. 
Pikmin 1 Plus 2 is one of the best value titles released on the Switch, and even if you own the original on GameCube like I do, the visual upgrades and portability combined with the fantastic pricing make this game a must own for the Nintendo Switch. It's not perfect, but it's damn good, and there's a lot to love here despite some of the game's shortcomings. Hey guys, thanks so much for staying all the way to the end. I'd recommend other content, but this is my first real YouTube video. I have some shorter stuff uploaded, but I hope to make more content like this video down the road, so if you would like to see that, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and drop a like. If you've played Pikmin, let me know what you think in the comments below. Lastly, I just want to mention that all my gameplay footage was streamed live right here on YouTube, so if you want to be a part of the creation of these videos, then stop on by when I go live. I hope you all have a wonderful time, and peace out.